Hi there, everybody, and you're very welcome to another episode of the South Tip Arts Podcast. In this episode, we're going to focus on the night that the country comes alive. Um, that's Culture Night 2020, which takes place this year on September the 18th, which is a Friday night. There are a wealth of events both on and offline available for you to choose from this year. And we'll be mentioning those at the very end of this podcast. First up, we took a trip to Thurles a little earlier this week to visit the Source Art Centre in the centre of the town. And there we got to catch up with Brendan Marr, a former artistic director of the South Tip Art Centre, but now very much a part of the furniture in the Source Art Centre in Thurles. I had a chat with Brendan about what lockdown was like for the flagship art centre in County Tipperary and how they're coping with the reopening of the art centre, theatre space and indeed the library at the source in Thurles. Brendan, it's lovely to be here. I've not been here for quite a while. Ye opened around the same time as we did in July, but really only now, like ourselves, is your programme really starting to kick off. So first, I suppose, tell me a little bit about how it's been. You're obviously the flagship art centre for Tipperary, so mm. you've got the biggest venue and obviously the most pressure, I would say, I suppose, to try and keep the building up and running. And I mean, you've got the performance space as well as the gallery and and the library space here as well. So it's, it's probably even more difficult for you in terms of people and how to manage all that and the reopening so but I suppose Source is regarded as being like a civic space mm. in the county obviously in the town of Thurles as well and I suppose we're expected to be open to be up and running and mm. like be, to be doing work mm-hmm. rather than not be doing anything and just waiting and seeing yeah. what's going on so we sort of took an active sort of interest with regards to getting back up and running we closed on March I think it was March the 13th uh, we had like a couple of shows ready to go that weekend and we just had to cancel them I think it was Kieran Goss was up that weekend uh, we were just a week into our Mikko D show, yes. Mikko D exhibition. Uh, we had to close that. And then we didn't really reopen the gallery till the 29th of June. So we, the Mikko D should have, show should have been closed at that point. Yeah. But what we did is we ran that for an extra like three weeks with mixed permission. Oh, that afterwards. was good. So we had yeah. a little bit more yeah. time with regards to that. But really we're only getting back into running events this week. Mm-hmm. live events. Now we did have a couple of uh, children's camp, or one children's camp, the Fracture Youth Theatre camp, and we had some small bits and pieces as well that were going on. We did a lot of live work, live sessions here that we mm. put out online on YouTube. But I suppose what, what it was that there wasn't really, uh, you know, there's a, there's a sense that like, like live music needs to be performed live and people need to be there, there is, at it. There is, there is. Yeah, so uh, having I think people sessions. are beginning to get a little bit fatigued with all the yeah. digital, you know, yeah, yeah. Zoom, everything. Mm. So. I mean, I've always said with regards to the digital thing, I mean, the digital world really sort of started as generated, I suppose, like 1995, 1996 onwards. And like there was a huge like, explosion in digital art mm. around that period up until like... Uh, up until now, obviously through the 2000s, the early mm-hmm. 2000s, and visual artists have sort of understood the digital world a little bit better than better than like live performance yeah. or live performers. And I've always sort of propagated that we should be really looking back at the digital artists yeah. now to see what were what were they doing, and really, you know, how was how how do we use digital artwork correctly, digital performance correctly? Do you know, because like everything has its own uh, structure with regards to how it's presented. Yeah. Live live performance is presented in a certain way. Yeah. And digital work should be presented in a certain way as mm-hmm, well. Mm-hmm. But we, I don't think we've got to the point of uh, understanding what digital can can do or the best it can do. And instead, what we happen, we just transferred live performance straight into into. I think film. that's it. Everybody sort of had to sort of yeah. jump straight in yeah. with two feet and. Having maybe not really paid that much attention yeah. to that platform before, sure. all of a sudden everybody's been cast into it without yeah. even the people who didn't want to have anything to do with it. Yeah. So maybe it's a good opportunity, I suppose, to for everybody, for all of us, mm. all every venue to try and have some sort of a, a digital um, presence mm. as well as, as a physical presence mm. because we don't know if we're going to find ourselves in the same situation again. Well, that's, that's the case. I mean, uh, I suppose what, what's happening now is that everything is truncated somewhat with regards like what can, what can happen. I suppose bringing the thing back to the digital means that we... I suppose the exciting thing about the digital thing is that we, for a place like Thurles or, you know, anywhere in Tipperary or any, anywhere in the regions in Ireland, basically the digital world is, is flattens the ge- geographical element of, of things. Mm. So you could, like, have a, you know, a well-known artist on your digital platform, on your website, engage them to do a piece of work yeah. that they don't need to come to Thurles or they don't need to come to Tipperary in any, any manner. 
but mm. they're still like acting on your behalf with regards putting on an event or something like that. Yeah. So it's a, it's a quite an interesting. It offers a huge opportunity if we were just if you just spend a little bit of time in trying to think about what is this medium, how does this media work, and yeah. what is the best way of presenting stuff on it. Basically, yeah. We we haven't probably cracked it yet, but I suppose we're going to get into this realm now on an ongoing basis and we'll have to start understanding it. I suppose what's going to happen in the source this week is that we're going to go back into the live angle of things mm-hmm. because that's sort of the key aspect with regards to what people want. People want live production, as we've said. Mm-hmm. Uh, they want to sort of like interact with people. They want to come out and have a, have a nice time. Yeah. See, hear live music, see, see a play or what have you. Mm-hmm. you know? So mm-hmm. this is sort of the, the other thing that needs to run in tandem with that. We have a digital world, we have a live world. Yeah. These things may need to coexist or need, may need to exist running alongside each other so yeah, for the, yeah, for the yeah. inter, interim period at least. Yeah. It might be a good opportunity for the different venues to start kind of collaborating with each other and maybe producing some stuff together that could cross over because mm. I don't know if you noticed this but like we're in Clonmel, mm. you're in Thurles. Sometimes it seems like it's a million miles away, mm. whereas, and it seems a little bit disconnected in a way mm. that and this is a big county and it's a problem with every aspect of everything, yeah. I think. But um, maybe it's a good opportunity for us all to start yeah. kind Linking of... Working together. And yeah, yeah, working together. And, um, well, Tipperary is unusual because Tipperary has no, ostensibly no very large town that everybody mm. orientates themselves to. So if you're in Clonmel, you're probably orientated towards Waterford. If you're in Thurles, you may be orientated towards Limerick or Dublin because yeah. of the train lines. Yeah. There's a bunch of things going on like that. So it, it's, it's, the county is strange in that way. And obviously the county is so large from like a tip to tail, basically, yeah. that we're naturally orientated up towards the, north, yeah. Northern, yeah. the northern yeah. part northern of the country, end, whereas, yeah. whereas Clonmel is probably orientated down a little bit towards the south. And that thing, obviously, this is, there's been a hist- historical political border between two areas of Tipperary that, mm. that's still sort of like not not been leapt over at this point yet. It's not really, yeah. is it? Even though like the borders are officially gone, it's still, you can still kind of see that. Yeah, yeah. It's still sort of a disconnection, yeah. which is weird. So you're back open again and your first, your opening show for this season is Austin McQueen, mm. Hypercarbon, yeah. um, which people will have heard Austin on this podcast just a few weeks back. Sure. And I will put a link in for them to go and listen back to that again if they want it's a lovely show, and you're having an opening, which is brilliant. Yeah. So that's yeah, a daytime no, opening. Yeah, we're going to have an opening. On, well, daytime probably best because we can see what's going on a little bit yeah, better, really, yeah. to a certain extent. But, I mean, it'll be quite discreet with regards to uh, mm. dealing with the numbers that, of people that are going to be arriving. We don't expect, like, a huge crowd, per yeah. se. But I suppose what we'll have is uh, we'll have an opportunity for people to come in and, and see the work and maybe chat to Austin as well, which, which is important, I think, you know. It really is, and that's one of the things that I think everybody's missing is even just a lovely way to acknowledge the artist and, yeah. and their work and, you know, give them a chance to, you know, meet public and talk to them about the work. So yeah. it'll be lovely to actually think that I, I'm working on Saturday, so I'm not going to get to come up, but mm. it'd be lovely to think that there's, there's an opening on somewhere. We've noticed that ourselves with the last two shows that we've had on, we've really been disappointed that we can't do that. So um, like you said, then it's important to find digital ways to kind of translate mm. those things across that... Yeah. We can't have them in a physical sense. So you also have your first live gig mm. coming up. That's coming up this week, David Keenan. He's yeah. a, uh, I, I would call him a bit of a sort of a troubadour right. in the Van Morrison vein. But he's like a very exciting act, I think. He's like been, on a, been in Electric Picnic and, mm. and various mm. other voices and things like that. And he's quite exciting. So we've got a very neat and discreet solo show by David Keenan here. Uh, there's probably only going to be about 40 or 50 people max here, basically. So, uh, it'll be you know, quite we're a- sitting here in the theatre in- at the moment in the lovely space and you have it done really, really nicely. It's got a very cabaret feel to it. It's sure. the first thing I thought when I walked in. Mm. And it, it's so well spaced out. And mm. obviously it's going to be a very intimate crowd, but sure. <laughs> it's great to see like mm. that level of activity and the anticipation now of some, somebody standing up there in that stage actually singing. Mm. Seems a bit unreal after how many months <laughs> yeah. of... Six months at yeah. least, really, isn't it? Well, it is sold out. With it's regards. sold out. I mean, there's, okay. there's only like 45 seats, basically, so that yeah. it's sold out and it's sold out pretty quickly. But it allows... I think, you know, it's important to just come back and start testing out these things. How do, how do events work? Yeah. What, what are the public like in, in, a, in this environment at, at these events? Yeah. And it, it gave us an opportunity to see, you know, how do we go forward into, into 2021 or 2021 yeah. and just see, you know, what can we put on safely, what works... 
you know, are small events like this, are they, are they more attractive? Are they less attractive? Yeah. It'll be quite interesting to see. So what interesting. We're I think everyone's a little bit hungry for something, like yes. something, to go to something, because yes, it doesn't seem to be anything on it. Yeah. Like, summer's nearly over now. I think people are... Yeah. Everyone knows it's going to start getting dark soon. It's going to be the winter, and it's yeah. just, you know we all need a little bit of a lift. Yeah. Uh, just, I personally wondered why. I know you've got the rake seating mm. normally, so what's the advantage of just not leaving the raking and having distant, you know, every second seat? Or well, when we were looking at it, uh, we were trying to try and figure out what would be the issues, and we we think with regards to raked seating that people will have to the audience members that come in. We'll have to walk by each other, each other. Okay. when, when they're getting out of the aisle yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. So this means that the way the seats are now with the tables means that it's quite three-dimensional and people yeah. can get up and walk away a bit more freely out of, out of the building, basically, or, or wherever they want to go. Yeah, yeah. Whether they're going to the toilets or going to the bar. The bar, we'll have a sort of like a soft drink bar, basically, uh, all okay, being well. Yeah. Uh, but we've got like two one-way systems in relation to that with regards to getting to the toilet or getting outside as well. So. Okay. It's just a control issue. I feel people will be more comfortable if they just see, have more room. That's it. If basically. they have more room, yeah. yeah. And actually walking into this space now, I think you'd be quite comfortable sitting yeah. in here. It really is really spacious. Mm, yeah. um, so I would happily come back to something in here in this mm. room. It's lovely. The other thing I want to talk to you about is Culture Night, because that's sure. probably your next mm. event next after. Week, yeah. yeah. So we have... Uh, Jasmine and Alex from the Isli Chioda mm. dance company, basically. And they're coming in on Culture Night to do a show in the restaurant. Mm-hmm. So this is the old restaurant in, in the source, basically. But we're going to have them performing, or a group of them from their company performing, a show called Miss Orbit. It's mm-hmm. a short short piece, basically. And they, the, the dancers will be in the actual, in, inside the building. Mm-hmm. And uh, the audience will be outside, outside the building, basically, on the boardwalk looking in. To the, through the, the large glass screens, the glass, glass windows, basically, mm. at the dancers. So it will be quite a sort of a strange thing. It should be quite interesting if, it's, if you know, with regards to the lighting of it, it's, it's quite interesting. That so, will be in, what time yeah. is it on at? It's on at half seven, so it should half seven. get a bit dusky at yeah, that point. Yeah. And there's another, another performance at half eight. And then the performance will be inside the window and the audience yeah. will be outside the yeah. window. So it'll be sort of like um, looking at a screen or a projection yes. or something and that like, sounds like very a, interesting like a three-dimensional screen or like what you'd call like uh i, I, I call it like, like a goldfish bowl type idea really that yeah like everybody's yeah. inside and the, yeah. the, you know the performers are inside and the audience are looking in at them yeah now, hopefully it won't rain which is an, another thing but crossed. again we've got small numbers for that we can only have 15 yeah. people looking yeah. looking at that as well so you know that should be interesting mm, you know, it should work, mm, should work mm, quite mm. well um going forward then anything else um you'd like people to know about in, in well, the next couple of months We've got our film club coming back. We've got various shows. We've got a show by Evo Mahoney called The Cute Whore. Oh, yeah, That's that people would Junction. have seen that at the yeah, Junction, yeah. 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 Uh, and then ver- we've got various bits and pieces. I suppose what we're doing is we're doing the programme like sort of two months and just seeing how it goes really mm-hmm. in regard to two months. And then mm. we'll run into November, November, December then with another sort of like rolling, rolling sort of programme and adding mm-hmm. bits on as we go along mm. to see how we get on, yeah. first of all, is, is important to see mm-hmm. how these events go go is quite important to us mm-hmm. and to see that they, they run safely is like obviously paramount mm-hmm. at this mm-hmm. point. In terms of what's coming in the future, you'd like to give a shout out to yeah, anybody mean, who's interested in collaborating with the source? Yeah, I mean, we're doing, uh, you know, we're looking into the, like 2021 at this point in mm-hmm. regards to, like framing a programme really that would be of, you know, of, of attraction to like the public. But we're also looking to see, you know, is there anybody out there that has a specific project that they'd be interested in, interested in doing in source? or working with us in yeah. some manner with regards to getting a project up and running. So, you know, that could be like a theatre piece, it could be a musical piece, yeah. it could be a video, it could be like a, a visual a visual arts piece or whatever. And we're not sort of like trying to sort of like have them uh, venue bound in any manner either, mm. that they have to happen in a venue, they have to be a performance, or they have to be an exhibition. It could be anything, it could be a digital project, it okay. could be like yeah. a, a book Something like that, you know, a f- photographic book or something like that. So this is you kind know. of interesting because yeah. this probably wouldn't have happened, would it? Well, mm. you know, to a certain extent, Source is always focused on, like, receiving, uh, receiving, you know, acts coming from, from the outside. Yeah, but yeah. But I suppose what, what I've been trying to do, like, being here in the last few years, is trying to reframe that and say, why, are, why don't we have acts from Tipperary touring to Dublin or touring to Cork? We're yeah. always, we always seem to be accepting acts from... You know, like theatre companies from yeah. outside into, into the county. We seem to be like specifically happy enough with regards to that happening. But we need to start looking to say, well, what are we going to produce in this county that can tour to to yeah. arts yeah. festivals in Kilkenny or Galway or like Edinburgh or wherever else? Yeah. You know, we need yeah. to start focusing on 
looking at our artists in this area, yeah. people that live here or who were born here, and trying to work with them to try and create new new works that would be, they don't necessarily need to be t- temporary specific in any yeah, manner, yeah. but that would like generate a good industry and a good opportunity for people to make a living here in temporary regards, making art okay. into the future. So if anybody's got any projects, if anybody's interested in doing anything, you know, they can contact me, director at sourcearts.ie, yeah. at sourcearts.ie, mm-hmm. uh, and I can chat to them or we can start you know, getting in contact from that point mm-hmm, forward. Mm-hmm. That'd be brilliant. It seems like, you know, with all the gloom and doom, but it does seem like an opportunity to kind of change things and open things out a bit and maybe start interacting with different audiences mm-hmm. in ways that we haven't done before, any of us. So it's yeah. maybe we've got to take the positives. It's got to be a good well, thing yeah, just, in some levels, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. every, every generation is like, it's going to hit some sort of like big crisis, whether it's mm-hmm. a recession or something else. Something's going to happen—a war or something like that. You know, mm. not every generation, but there's always there's always things going on. Yeah. There are always issues that are like blocking people from like achieving things in a sort of a normal yeah. fashion, and we just need to sort of like move along from but that you and just, just adapt, uh, don't you? yeah, and try and yeah. sort of see. You know, is there anything exciting about this with regards to like moving forward into like new realms yeah. and doing things differently, differently. and do, doing yeah, things yeah. like well differently as well? Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, it's been really good to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thanks a million. As Brendan mentioned there, the opening exhibition at the source for the autumn season is Hypercarbon by Austin McQuinn, which opens this very weekend. I had the pleasure of chatting to Austin at his studio a number of weeks back as Austin prepared for this current show of his at the source. And here's a little taster of that. There is a sort of an ecological, not ecological, but an ecology that I'm trying to work on in this series of work which is I did a, the last exhibition there was a lot of bat imagery and I was very okay. interested in bats yeah because they're living here in my house oh in the yeah attic. I your clothes, yeah so there's this sort of cycle mm. that I'm identifying which is where the manure the horses pass by the manure is there mm. flies emerge from this the bats eat this okay yeah, and the yeah, bats yeah. then clean the air and they animate my world yeah and uh, this is the ecology of the mountain yeah and uh, it's just these four elements mm. so this is this is where the swarms come in so it's this going from swarms to mounds of things including my own mass right. so yeah, yeah. like there's a you know the other things that you're identifying are there but also to me there's um like tissue or yeah, muscle, muscle, muscle mass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when you would yeah. see a diagram yes, of, of yeah. muscle. Of muscle tendons. And all tendons, that there's that them. element yeah. for me. So, I mean, I can't, it would be glad I can't explain them completely to you. Yeah, because then yeah. there wouldn't be any point in making them. And are they the same as but the swarm ones elements. in that when you start that one, you, you have to finish that one? Or, oh, or can you... Really, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I prepare the ground, you know, there's like these stains and marks and so on so I sort of flood the can they're yeah. on canvas yeah and um, I flood the canvas with inks and yeah. various kinds and wipe it back put ink back on it and wipe it back until I'm and scrape it back until I'm kind of happy yeah that this is a surface that's ready to go right. and then I'm perched here on my stool and the work is done mm. flat mm. and um, then I just have and to you go find that you just don't yeah it's work like, not, it's yeah. not really zoned out actually yeah. I think... Um, well, I don't doubt it's the wrong word. No, I know what you mean. It uh, assumes that you're not concentrating or something, but you know what yeah. I mean, that you just, you're in it almost. You have to stay with it. Yeah. You have to stay with the problem. There's a pleasure in, in when it's finished, I suppose. Finished, yeah. And you but have, it's work. Do you have um, trouble then going, oh, this is finished, leave it alone? Or, I do. Yeah, yeah, like everybody. It's <laughs> yeah. like... I have to be enough really enough. careful. yeah. Yeah, because with these inks, right, it's not like painting. You'll see over on my, that table there is a mound of oh, lovely oil paints, which I thought I was going to be doing. Right. No. Yeah. And with oil paint, it's very forgiving medium. Uh-huh. And uh, I trained as a painter. That's what I did right, before yeah. I made any sculpture. Yeah. But with the ink, you can make a mistake. No. You cannot actually... You have to, there can't be a drop. On yeah, thing. because it would to, seep through, wouldn't it? You're it, into your, and then permanent. how do you get rid of that? It's gone. It's you permanent. Don't, yeah. So it's very, very controlled. So every mark you make is is the mark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you finish, when you're asking that, try to trust that you'll just know, you'll just and know or it will yeah. tell you. Yeah. And um, 
In fairness, this is a series of nine of these, and there was one that didn't work out, and it was because I left it and came back to it. Okay. I said, oh, well, and now I know what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, it's maybe number four. I said, no, you know, I can go and yeah, to Clonmel and, yeah. you know. And it came back and I said, I'll pick that up yeah, later. It no, disaster. No. You know, I yeah. couldn't get back to it. And then I painted it black. It was awful. Yeah. You know, so I learned my lessons. So you'll just stay with that in one sitting until it's As complete. much as I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 As much as I can. Yeah. And this ink... So, as I said, I was all set up, but, you know, mm-hmm. COVID happened. I was already, yeah. I was already working. I was like, hey, this is great. And I, yeah. But there was a massive clear out and the new tires on the trailer. And I was over yeah. back to the dump. <laughs> yeah. And the place was immaculate. Yeah. And I was all ready to go um, with this, with the next phase. Yeah. I had been painting away, but it just, it just stopped. And you can listen back to that entire interview with Austin by visiting our social media channels where you will find a link to our podcast. I'll also place a link in the show notes of this episode. Well, as we mentioned a number of times already, Culture Night 2020 takes place on Friday the 18th of September all over the country. But right here in Tipperary, there is a fantastic mix of live and virtual events. In these challenging times for everyone, the imagination takes centre stage with projects and big ideas dotted all over the county, imagined and created by Tipperary based artists. An exciting mix of both online and physical events to suit all ages is promised, showcasing the wealth of artistic talent that we have here in Tipperary. And just because I'm biased, I want to give a special mention to our own events here being organised by South Tipperary Arts Centre. The first one is Bijou Opera, which takes place at the main guard. It features a mini gala with baritone Brendan Collins, soprano Joan O'Malley and pianist Niall Kinsla, who will take you on a whirlwind journey through your favourite operas and operettas in arias and duets filled with fun and romance. The booking for that is through Eventbrite and all inquiries can be made here at South Tipperary Arts Centre. The second event is a sound walk of Clonmel. Join sound artist Sean Taylor on this sound walk, which is intended to enhance the participants' perception of sound and silence, offering a unique approach to understanding soundscapes as well as offering movement, sound and listening strategies. These strategies are designed to enhance our skills in mindfulness, listening and attuning to place and space. This creative sound walk is open to all creative practitioners and members of the public and is entirely free like all our Culture Night events. It begins from 5pm here at the Arts Centre and you can book your place on the sound walk by contacting info at southtipartcentre.ie. And our fantastic John Burke retrospective exhibition continues and will be open until 9pm on Culture Night. And if you've not had a chance to visit this exhibition of one of Ireland's masters of modernist sculpture and public art, then it's well worth a view before it finishes on Saturday the 19th of September. You can find out everything that's going on in Tipperary this Culture Night by visiting www.culturenighttipperary.ie That's www.culturenighttipperary.ie If you'd like to get in touch with the podcast, the email address is southtipartspodcast at gmail.com That's southtipartspodcast at gmail.com Thanks for listening and we will talk to you next time. (laughs) 